Hello, and thanks for joining me here this evening in my studio. Um, I'm really excited to show you another technique that I really love to use. It's one of the first techniques that I ever um, observed and was like, I got to figure out how to do that. Um, it's, it also is a technique that looks really easy um, once you get a few details figured out, but in the beginning it can be a real hot mess the first time you try. It certainly was for me. Um, I'm Lori Fowler and I am an artist based out of Nashville, Tennessee. I create fluid acrylic paintings. Um, I am inspired by nature and by scripture and my um, journey of life and relationship with the Lord and emotions and all of those things. So I'm glad you're here with me today and joining me. Um, I'll show you some of the, the materials that I use. Um, I just have a standard canvas um, that you can get at the craft store. Um, it's already gessoed. People ask a lot of times if I'm if I gesso my um, canvases ahead of time. No, they're they're already gessoed, and that's enough. Um, I have gloves, which are very helpful to keep that extra paint off my hands. Even though I always end up doing some finger painting along the way after I've taken my gloves off, because it's just hard to walk away and stop. <laughs> um, I have acrylic paint with a um, pouring medium called Floetrol in the paints. Um, as well as water. And if you're interested in learning more about that um, recipe, you can go to my website, which we'll post in the link um, at the bottom of, of this video. Um, I also have a torch. This helps with popping bubbles and um, kind of bringing the piece together a little bit more. Sometimes little details come up when I use the torch and I'll show you how to do that. And then I have this standard blow dryer. This actually just used to be my travel blow dryer. And um, then I had an attachment that is like a diffuser attachment and I taped it on and this works great for me. So, um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and start putting paint on my canvas and then um, go ahead and show you the blow dryer. All right. <clears throat> so this is a 16 by 20 canvas and um, this is a standard depth. A lot of times I use um, gallery wrapped, but for purposes today, it's just going to be that standard depth. It's about, I think it's about half an inch thick. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to cover my canvas in white paint and that'll be my base. So, um, I'm trying to see if I have, okay, I don't have the other. So I'm going to, have, going to go ahead and pour this on my canvas. And you can see as I do this that the paint is pretty thin. If you've ever worked with acrylic paint on its own, um, you know that it's kind of like a toothpaste consistency, but with the consistency I'm working with here, since I've added that medium and water to it, it's very, fluid and that way I can move it around on my canvas really easily and that is really helpful um, to get some beautiful designs. I'm just going to use my blow dryer to kind of spread this out. A little bit of splattering going on. I'm try tilting it. Move it a little bit more. So the main goal of my painting right now is just to move it on, um, on the canvas so that my canvas is covered with the space paint. And let me see if I have a tool to help me spread it out. This will help too. Fluid painting is a great way to process, to just spend time having fun. Um, that's what I have fallen in love with about it. So if you've ever iced a cake, which I am not very good at, <laughs> um, this, this part kind of feels like icing a cake to me where you're just kind of spreading things out um, along the canvas to get it to move. 
And this is going to help my colors that I add on top move really well onto the canvas as well. I'm gonna add some more over here. So I started fluid painting um, in 2020 and it's been fun to hear other people pick up um, creative outlets during that time too. It was, it was a very, very challenging time, you know, for all of us. And, um, but I was thrilled that um, my church actually had a video of this is how you can try fluid painting with your, with your kids. And I did and fell in love with it and um, didn't really have a, the skill set yet and know exactly what I was doing, but I liked and loved my paintings enough that I was like, I'm going to keep trying this and keep, um, keep working on the techniques that I'm interested in. And that's kind of where um, my desire to use the blow dryer came in. So now I'm just covering my sides of my painting, of my canvas with paint. I love also with fluid painting that you get a bit messy. I've always enjoyed getting messy. Some of my favorite memories as a kid were um, coming back from being out in the woods. I grew up in kind of the North Georgia area and just being covered in mud so much that I had to be hosed off. <laughs> so to me, um, messy is, a, is creative and I love that about this. All right, I'm just gonna tilt this a little bit more to get my paint kind of even on my canvas. I love with fluid painting too that there's, there's guidelines, like the consistency of the paint um, really needs to be um, I say like uh, warm honey is a good consistency to use and if that consistency isn't if it's too thin or too thick your paint's not going to do what you want it to and that can be one of the most frustrating things about fluid painting because you can watch a video like this and think oh I'm gonna I'm going to get the same results but that doesn't always happen and some of that is really just due to the consistency so if you buy pre-mixed paints a lot of times those are too thin from what I've found um, and just don't work very well for most um, most techniques. So um, it can be a good place to start though, but it is more expensive as well to buy the pre-mixed paints. And I've just found a lot more success in mixing my own. Okay, so I've got some air bubbles in here. You probably can't really see them, but um, I'm gonna use my torch to pop those air bubbles. And I'm holding my torch I don't know, about three inches above my canvas and at an angle and moving it back and forth because if I'm not moving it, it will burn the paint. And that's not really what I'm going for here. Okay. <clears throat> now comes the exciting part where I'm going to show you how I add colors to my canvas and then I'm going to use the blow dryer to blow that out. Okay, so I kind of pre-selected some colors that I really like that are very bright and bold. Um, a lot of my paintings are more of a subtle, um, subtle colors and more neutrals like the painting behind me, but I do like to also paint with pops of color. So that's what we're gonna do today. Okay, so I'm going to first kind of decide what I want my design to look like. Um, I like to kind of start on one side and then move my way to the other, and that's what I think I'll do today. These spray bottles, I mean squirt bottles, are really helpful to get the paint on um, my canvas and be a little bit more controlled about it. Speaking of controlled, fluid painting really is a process of letting go of control a lot of times because I can go in and have um, a plan for what I think my painting is going to look like but often it looks different than I think it will and that's okay it's 
part of the um, part of the process and letting go of that of that um, control and just seeing what my paints do and then moving with that. So that can be really um, a bit challenging for people when they start um, to let go of designs that they thought they were going to have or the way that they thought it was going to look. But I always encourage people to just keep on um, keep on going until you do like your piece and, and try to let go of that control of what you think it needs to look like. There's been paintings I've created and thought, I don't like that at all. I'm probably going to scrape it and um, do it again and then end up giving it some time. My husband often is like, why don't you just, you know, let it just sit there for a little bit and then come back and think about it again. And then it usually I'm like, oh my goodness, this looks beautiful, but it just wasn't how I thought it was going to look. So I have to, I had to wrap my mind around it. Let's see. I'll do a little bit of this darker blue. So, so far I've put kind of a bright orange, a teal color, um, kind of a magenta, and then um, a more burnt, burnt orange or burnt sienna. Okay. I do really like this magenta and teal, so I'm going to add a little bit extra of those. Oops. Sometimes that'll happen where like a little fleck will fall into the paint and I can just tap it with my finger and it comes off. And then I wrap it on, <laughs> wipe it on my apron that's obviously been through a lot with me. I think I, I think this has been my apron for the, the whole four years that I've been painting. So there's a lot of history on this apron. And then I like to add gold at the, um, at the end. This is a uh, metallic gold, so it has mica powder in it so it makes it nice and sparkly which adds really a nice pop at the end so I put that on top <clears throat> it's a little bit thicker than my other paints so um, it works really well just to be on the top and be the last like that top color that shows through okay and then I'm going to add just a tiny bit of white paint on both sides and this will give my colors a little bit more runway or leeway to to move once I blow them out. Okay. Are you ready for the fun part? Um, you know, I have an idea of what this might look like, but it might turn out completely different than I think it will, like I said. So let's go ahead and see. And I'm gonna start my blow drying process coming this way. And then I'm gonna kind of move my blow dryer in different directions until I come up to the top. So pretty. And I can come back here and do a little bit more if I want to spread that out a bit. Hmm. I want this to take a bit more of my canvas, so I'm just going back over it and thinking about where I want it to be a bit bolder.
Okay, this is a good start. And then I'm going to use my straw to blow this out even more, um, but I'll have a little bit more control. I can also just blow on it without using a straw and I'll get a different effect. The straw is gonna give me more of a like concentrated design and then um, using just blowing on it, it's going to be more of like a broader um, effect. So I really like how this is kind of forming on the end and then the, the um, motion that we've got going here. Kind of want something maybe here to pull out and I might add a little bit more white here. So let's see. use my straw and blow right here so that it's easier to see when using the straw because I can see up a bit higher. So I like that. And also it's a little bit easier to reach different areas. Like up here is a bit difficult for me to reach from down here. So I can kind of pick up some of these colors that are here and move them out. So I can see that I've got some teal down here. I can see that um, obviously this magenta is kind of on the edges. So I can blow that out more into the white. And you get condensation in the straw because you're blowing hot air into it. So I just kind of tap that off um, to a paper towel every once in a while. I love these delicate designs that are showing through. Um, I don't know if you can see it, you should be able to. So it's beautiful, this is called lacing here and just beautiful delicate designs that you really just can't get with a paintbrush. So I just love that about it. I love how um, we've got this rich design of the blue on the orange here. Um, see I kind of want to make this look a little more fanned out so I'm trying to blow in the same direction that my design is going so that I've got that cohesion of um, of a pattern I'm gonna turn this. If it doesn't stick to my risers, it did. That's okay. Now I can work on this side a little bit more. So let's see if I can, I kind of want this to be a little more, um, to go in a little bit here. So I'm gonna see if I can blow my white that direction and see if it, I can get it to move a little bit.
I also often end up painting my hair. Let me see if I can get this to move a little more. So really this is the part that could go on for a long time. I love that the fluid acrylic paint takes at least 24 hours to 48 hours to be dry to the touch. This might even take longer because um, I'm not tilting the paint off the canvas very much. So it's got a good several layers of paint, but that also means that I have more time to tweak it and mess with it until I'm happy with the design. So. I love that about it. Um, I could also, you know, be in here for hours working on this, which I don't, I don't think you're going to probably want to sit here for hours watching me, but um, I'm going to get it to about where I'm happy with it. And then I'll answer any questions that you might have about um, using a blow dryer or other questions about fluid art as well. So there are ways that I can come in here and this white paint is kind of um, covering the design that I in the way that I want it to, but I can also pick up some of this white paint and color and then put white paint back on top. And that'll help with my composition as well. So I'm gonna go in and actually just kind of blot this out. This is the messy middle part of the process. So I'm just trying to make sure I've got most of this color up and then I will pour white paint back on top. I hear from my students a lot of times, like when they first, especially start fluid painting, like they don't want to waste paint and they don't use enough paint. And then they're like, oh, I needed more than I thought I did. And there's like this um, hurdle that a lot of times people have to get over because they've spent so much time making sure like, oh, these paints are precious. I don't want to mess up, especially if you've ever, you know, been in another art class. Um, but with fluid painting, there is going to be paint that runs over the side there is going to be paint that's not used and that's just part of the process and um it's part of that letting go that you have to do to um enjoy the journey because we can try in life right to make sure we don't miss anything and don't make a mess and that is a safe way to do it but we're gonna probably miss out when we do that i can say that for myself at least um, and I feel like fluid painting has such a um, parallel to life in a lot of ways. And messy is is beautiful. And we find out that there's beautiful things that come from, from being messy. So it's certainly something that I've found with fluid painting. All right. I think I'm about where I want to take this. I might take just a little bit more here.
So I'm trying to make sure I get all that color up because once I put my white paint back down on it, I don't want to have, you know, color shining through that white paint. Okay. Looks good. So I'm gonna take my white paint and it looks pretty messy right now, right? But this is going to help that out a lot. This is my negative space that I'm bringing back into the piece. And this adds more interest for the design, I think. And this paint will settle as it dries. Just kind of spreading it out, smoothing it out a little bit here. Okay. Now I'm going to make this part look a little bit more natural to the rest of the piece. Kind of blow out the sides a little bit. And I'm just gonna go, like this is so um, straight, I'm just gonna go in and kind of blow on the edges just a little to make it look a little bit more um, organic to the piece. And also draw, probably blow a little bit of white over top of this. Okay, I'm really liking this now. This area looks so much more like I was going for. I probably just wiped paint on my face, but it's okay. Okay, and I'm gonna take a look at the whole piece. Let's see. Turn it again. I'm, I'm really happy with how this is looking now.
Okay. I keep thinking I'm done, and then I look at it, and I'm like, oh, I just put this on another spot. All right. I love this. Okay, I'm going to turn it to show you. So something I might do after this um, is add some gold leaf details, um, or I might just keep it simple as is. But I love how um, the colors really pop on this canvas and um, on this white background, and there's so many beautiful details that are showing through the piece. Um, let's see, what I love this part right here. That beautiful aqua going over the orange and these beautiful lacing details here. I love all this tiny detail there. And this color combination, I think it's just beautiful. It's just really happy and fun and playful. And yeah, really happy with that. So I hope you enjoyed watching and um, if you have questions, you can go ahead and you can ask them now. Um, you can also uh, go to my website and send me an email if you have questions. Um, we'll post the link to my website at the bottom. And um, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter. That's where we'll be letting you know about other um, demos that I have going on as well as online classes and if you're local to Nashville I also have local classes um, going on here as well lots of different fun opportunities that you can be a part of and you don't have to have any artistic experience to give fluid painting a try you just have to have the um, mindset that you're gonna have fun let go of control and it's probably going to look different than you expect, and, and that's okay. I love seeing my um, students' faces after they try fluid painting, and they're just often really shocked at the beauty they can create. So I really want to encourage you to give it a try um, and see what paintings you come up with, and then also check out my classes, and I'd love to teach you more about what I've learned and um, also help you in your creative journey of having fun and exploring. So thanks again for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next time. Can I answer some questions? Oh, if you have questions, are there some questions? What kind of paints are you using? Um, the kind of paints that I use are um, Artist Loft is the white that I use. I like Artist Loft because um, it gives me these pretty um, details here in lacing. I use a lot of student grade and studio grade paints. Um, you don't have to use the top grade, super expensive uh, paints to create beautiful art. Um, so much of it, like I said, is the consistency of the paints. And you want to have enough pigmentation in there, which is what gives the paints their colors. Um, but you can get that from studio grade and student grade paints. I also like to use, um, oh, I'm thinking, I'm blanking on the brand, but we can post it in the comments too. Liquitex, thank you. I also like to use Liquitex Basics and um, Windsor Newton is one of a little bit more of an expensive brand, but I like to use that brand as well. So uh, also Hobby Lobby carries a brand called Master's Touch and I use that as well and really enjoy those paints and they work well for what I need. Did you use a blow dryer in the painting behind you? Um, the question, did I use the blow, a blow dryer in the painting behind me? No, I did not. Um, 
In this painting, I used gravity. I tilted the canvas um, in many different directions and layered several different um, of layers of paint onto it to get this really beautiful, cohesive piece. Um, it's one of my favorites. And um, I also, once the painting was dry, I added the gold leaf details and then sealed the paint, the piece as well. So um, that's just another technique that is really fun to use. Um, I love that you get different results with all these different techniques and then you can even combine them. Um, that's something I enjoy doing as well as I'll combine multiple techniques in a piece to um, make it my own. And each of these pieces are one of a kind. So I will, um, I can create a very similar piece to this, but it's not going to be exactly the same. And that's really what makes each painting really special is that no two are going to be alike. The paints are going to react a little bit differently each time. All right, well, thank you for joining me. Again, I hope to see you uh, at another at a class or um, that you reach out to me with any questions, comments, um, and make sure you follow along by subscribing to my newsletter. Have a great night.